to flow somewhat but not as good as a pure conductor and so I want to pass this resistor around and let everybody look at it and we're going to talk about resistor color codes in a little bit now the next thing oh and here's another resistor the next thing I want to talk about is a capacitor now a capacitor is basically two plates of a conductor separated by an insulator. Now the purpose of a capacitor is to store a charge because of the law of charges, like charges do what? Y'all remember? They, they repel. Unlike charges, attract. So if I put a negative charge on one plate of this capacitor and a pos it makes a positive charge on the other, it will store a charge. This particular capacitor is called an electrolytic capacitor. It's basically aluminum foil, and it, they put fish oil in here as an insulator. And it's rated in farads, and it has a voltage that you can't exceed without it breaking down. It will not have, you can't have current flow through a capacitor, but you can have uh, signal flow through a capacitor. This is a paper capacitor. This is one of the earliest capacitors that they would make. I got this out of a 1930 radio just to show it. It is aluminum foil with paper in between wrapped in a coil. And they made these two plates to make a capacitor. It has a resistor soldered to it. Here's two more examples of early paper and foil capacitors. These two are ceramic capacitors. Ceramic capacitors have two plates and a ceramic material in between. They're typically uh, lower uh, sizes in farads. The next thing, which is a common, is an inductor or a coil. A coil is just a coil of wire wrapped around a spool and um, or some substance to make it a coil of wire and that's used to change the frequency it will pass DC but block AC capacitors pass AC and block DC inductors will pass DC and impede AC here's some inductors can you explain what AC and DC are? yeah I'm going to do that in a little bit but I'm going to go um, I'll, I'll jump to that because a lot of this stuff we're doing, I'm having to, you know, talk about things you haven't learned yet. And I'm going to talk about it later, but I'm going to jump to that because that's a good question. <clears throat> DC is called direct current. And it's basically where the electrons will flow from a negative terminal to a positive terminal. And I'm going to get into the potential difference in a little bit. But it's actually the physical flow of electrons from one point to another. That's DC through a conductor. AC is where the electrons really aren't flowing but they're moving back and forth. And if you look at the typical AC signal on an oscilloscope, which I'm going to talk about an oscilloscope in a little bit, it is a sinusoidal wave, which means the electrons are flowing one way at one time and they're flowing the other way at another time. But even though the electrons are just sitting there going back and forth in the wire, you're still transmitting electrical energy, which is what does the work. And so that's the difference between AC and DC, and I know that's a little bit shallow of an explanation, but I'm going to get to that in a little bit more. And if you have any questions, please ask, because I love questions. Here's, um, here's another inductor. She's got a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is this a radio, radio inductor. inductor. I, I remember seeing a television program about Thomas Edison, and I remember that his company promoted one type of current, and I don't recall whether it's AC or DC, and his competitors promoted the other. Yeah, that was uh, Tesla and Edison, and that was called the War of the Currents. And Tesla was a genius, and Edison was a genius as well, but they were two very different kinds of geniuses. 
And I'm getting a little bit ahead of it, but it makes a very important answer to your question. Um, when Edison came out, he developed the DC generator, battery uh, storage, and he would supply power to like a few city blocks of DC. Now it's true DC is a little safer than AC, but it's really hard to move it much past two or three city blocks. Because it, since it is flowing through the conductor, it attenuates. When you're using AC, you can step it way up to a higher voltage, send it down a much smaller wire because the voltage is higher, you can have less current but still have the same amount of power, and you can send it for very long distances. As a matter of fact, if you step it up high enough, at a higher enough frequency, you don't even have to have a wire that'll travel through space. But they had a war. Edison really didn't like AC because he was the one that invented or came up with DC. And Edison hired Tesla to help him develop his systems. He came over from uh, Europe and it, it, was, it was bad because they had an agreement that Edison was going to pay him like $50,000 and after Tesla developed all this stuff for Edison, Edison stiffed him and fired him. And so Tesla went and started his own company and he, was, he went to work for General Electric to develop AC power, which is the only way you could do power like to be successful like we have now. Otherwise, you'd have to have a generator every two or three city blocks. And then it would go out and everybody would have to take care of their own personal generator. Well, uh, in the war of the currents, Edison was trying to convince everybody that AC was dangerous and it would, it would, it would kill you. And so the one thing Edison did invent uh, with AC was the electric chair. The, and mainly the invention of the electric chair was to demonstrate how dangerous AC was. And, and they, they went around, he went around the country demonstrating the danger of AC. And uh, he would often electrocute animals, which I thought was sort of sad, just to demonstrate how bad AC was and, and scare everybody away from it. And uh, I think the quintessential example of that was Tilly the elephant that was at Long Island. Was it Long Island where they had that big circus? And, and Tilly had been a mistreated elephant. And she had killed several of her keepers. They were mean to her. And so Edison set up this demonstration. And Edison also invented the film, the first uh, you know, um, motion picture film. And so one of his first, first films was The Death of an Elephant. And so what they did was they tied this elephant up in the middle of a field and they hit it with 60,000 volts of AC, killed the elephant instantly. And you can see smoke and everything. And if you go on the internet, you can watch that video or that film. And I thought that was just weird that they, they had such a feud over AC and DC that Edison would go around killing these animals to demonstrate how dangerous it was. And, uh, you know, but it's sad if you watch that, that uh, film today, you know. And so that's one of those things that, that uh, you know, they, there's, there's just all kinds of stories of feuds and different ideas between these inventors. Did that answer your question? I love that question. Um, so we're still in parts. Um, I, fit it, I did inductors, right? Of course, we have batteries. And you can pass, you, you know what these are. Y'all don't need to pass these around. And um, the next thing I would say, and I've, I've skipped over several different parts, but I'm hitting the basic parts, tubes. And these are uh, examples of older tubes. A tube is an evacuated glass envelope like a light bulb. And what happens is when the Edison discovered this, he discovered that if you heated the filament in one of his light bulbs, that electrons would tend to want to leave the filament. He called it the Edison effect or the thermionic, thermionic effect or whatever, but he didn't really see a practical purpose in that. Later on, there were several inventors that realized, well, we can take um, and use this effect where electrons will leave a filament, and we put another plate in the tube, then the electrons will go from the filament to the other plate, and we can convert AC to DC because that converts electrons that are going back and forth to electrons that only go one direction. So the first tube was a diode tube, which only allowed AC, which turned AC into DC. And then they, they came up, a guy named Lee DeForest, 
invented what was called the audion tube, and he came to the conclusion that if he put a little grid in between the anode and the cathode, okay, and I'm going to give you a memory point here. Ants are red and cats are black. And red means positive, black means negative. So anodes are what? Positive. Cathodes are negative. And if you remember that ants are red and cats are black, then you'll know what the polarity is of your anode and cathode in a tube. Are the anode and cathode in a semiconductor diode or transistor or anything that has anodes and cathodes? Okay? So, I put, if he put this little grid in between these two, the heater and the plate, it would control, if you put a little voltage on that grid, it would control the flow from the cathode to the anode. And by doing that, you could take a little bitty signal and control a great big current flow, making you create a great big signal that matched the little bitty signal and that created the first form of amplification. Okay, so they used that to make amplification. So tubes were basically diodes, <coughs> convert AC to DC. Amplifiers, take a little signal, make it into a big signal. And we're having to wrap up. We're going to take a little break because we're at the end of our first 30 minutes. And we'll be back and we'll talk more about parts. Thank you so much.